Hey everyone, today I'm going to be reviewing the Lego Ninjago Lloyd's Hydro Mech set from the Seabound season. I bought this with my own money. It's not a sponsored review. This is not a scripted review. These are just my own off the cuff, honest thoughts about this set. This set's pretty straightforward, coming with just the mech and then two figures, one good and one bad. Taking a look at it from different angles really quickly, you can see that it has a good amount of thickness to it, but not a lot of detail around the back. It is very, very asymmetrical by design, which can definitely be a cool thing. And there was a lot of emphasis put on minimizing the number of pieces used here. The single largest and most obvious piece used on the whole model is this inverted or upside down rear of a helicopter or airplane fuselage uh, in dark green. I don't know if you've gotten that in dark green before, but with the single sticker on it, and then there's a little spot over here that kind of fill up with the use of a, a suggestion of a floodlight or a spotlight there. Just makes it look like an asymmetrical large pauldron for that side, which works just fine for me. Here you've got that piece that was introduced a couple seasons ago, used to good effect on this pauldron. Now this one's able to move around a little bit. This one's able to move around as well, but not quite as much in order to give you some room for articulation with the arms. The arm on this side has this pretty nice set of, of pincers or pinchers with a simple design, again, uh, but effective. You know, I, I kind of I kind of like that that blade shape there, and it looks like it's got extra claw or teeth uh, designs at the end as if those could be articulated even though they're not. Now you're not able to grab but so many things with this, you know, it's not the most practical thing, but just moving down, I'll show you the articulation in just a minute. Uh, you've got these uh, kind of comma, uh, K-A-M-A, uh, segments off to the sides, which look like they're layered, once again, using that, that same single large textured piece to good effect. And each of these is also on a ball joint, so that can move out of the way for the sake of articulation for the lower extremities. The legs are built identical to one another. Once again, some stickers are used down here and this gets pretty simple. It's actually a little bit, uh, a little bit fragile at the, at the toes right there. It's a little bit different design, just have something unique looking. And then over on this side, you have an arm, which does have a couple of fingers that can be articulated in and out. There's a clip in there to hold on to the whole sword and the sword can be kind of rotated around, but it's nice that there's a clip so you don't have to worry about this holding, you know, the fingers themselves holding things together. You can rotate the thumb a little bit as well. Nicest thing here that I did not expect is rotation at the wrist. Well done, that is very nice. And again, using just a minimal number of pieces, that inner uh, gray piece there is a, a one by two Technic brick and it holds the, the, the pin goes, that goes through there gives you this wrist articulation and also holds the, uh, the, the clip, which is an Exo Force hand to hold on to the sword. So again, good efficient use of parts. Uh, in the center, the canopy is a reused piece throughout this entire season. And this is pretty simple in how it allows the figure to, to be held in there. No studs are used. It's just put in place with the, the uh, panel piece, the one by two panel piece down the middle. Fully decked out like this with all the all the stuff on the figure is not able to sit back completely But there are some ways you can kind of work around that depending upon exactly how you have this lower portion Move in versus the upper portion There are some different looks you can get out of this to have it kind of sticking out more or to bring him in a little bit Tighter, but ultimately the face does do a pretty good job of lining up with the main central port hole there And it does seal up decently well around the sides. Yeah, you got your gaps, but it's not too obvious I think uh, speaking of gaps just looking around around the back um, I mean, yeah, there's some openings, but nothing is too bad. These flaps are brought down so even when this is articulated away from you you still have decent coverage from a fair number of angles. I mean, this is reasonable enough. I'd rather not see the blue there, but it's not that bad. I'd rather not see the red here. Uh, eh, this one doesn't bother me as much, but let me go ahead and show you the articulation. So first of all, with the, the weapon arm over here, this is on a ball joint, a large ball joint, uh, Bionicle slash CCBS style ball joint for the shoulder, which gives you plenty of range of motion. I mean, you can move that in without changing anything else, just using that one single uh, ball joint there. And then having the pauldron being able to move around allows that to stay covered, but it doesn't get in the way too much. For the elbow on this side, there's a ratcheted joint, so that can come all the way to 90 degrees. It looks 
It looks fairly skinny in there, but again, does the job with a minimum number of pieces. So this can come in pretty tight like that. And with the help of the wrist articulation, you can also go across the, the chest like this. So, you know, you can put it into some different guards. That works pretty well. The other side is similar with its articulation with, again, a large uh, uh, ball joint used up at the top. You can actually rotate that around for slightly different range of, of motion, but I think this is, this is the intent. And again, you've got the ability to rotate at the elbow full 90 degrees. You can also go, oh no, I thought it could go back, but I forgot it's, it's blocked from the other side. So yeah, it's just fairly realistic range of motion. And then down here for the legs, once again, large uh, ball joints, one piece used for the inner part that has the ball on both sides, a modified two by two bricks. So they can go, they can go way forward and way back. There are no knees here. You can see how this is just so unfinished on the side, but it's okay. You know, it, it doesn't really bother me that much because there's a nice design on, on the front. And I know if they just bulked this the heck up, it would have just, increase the price of the whole thing. This looks not quite as good to me still, but you know, this works. Uh, the, the ball joint down at the ankle also works together to allow you to put this into some extreme poses, but there's one big problem with this articulation wise and posing wise, the, the hip joints in particular are really weak. Doesn't want, <laughs> doesn't want it, it's falling over just doesn't have a good amount of, of friction in there in these joints in particular. So no matter how I set this up, if I'm on a surface that is relatively hard and, and smooth, it wants to start doing the splits in some kind of direction. So that definitely is pushing the limits of friction that, that works with those joints. And I feel like the model is just generally a little bit too heavy for that design needed friction adders or a redesign for that part to add a little bit more friction to it by default. You can get good poses out of this, but for play, I think that it can be a little bit, uh, a little bit annoying. And these down here a little bit are a little bit lacking in friction, but the thing that I like least down here at the feet is the fact that the the foot pieces tend to come apart. I mean, that's already starting to split. It's already starting to, to you know, just from doing a little bit of, of posing with this, not really playing with it hard, but those, I mean, I just hit that, hit it once and tapped it once and it's coming apart even further. So again, these are a little bit fragile uh, down here. Not that great for play overall, unfortunately. The Lloyd figure is built in the same way as the other C-bound ninja with the dual molded headgear piece and then a somewhat flexible, slightly rubbery black part that includes the rebreather, the the air tank uh, hoses, the tank itself has a built-in scabbard so you can put the katana through there and it also connects around the neck and around the hips so it's all nice and secure, it gives you a couple of of pockets in the front. Overall, the design here is pretty nice. Comes with a couple of flippers so that he can operate outside of the mech. And there's what it looks like with most of the stuff removed. He does, of course, also have an alternate face because they've just made that consistent. The Mare guard just looks great to me. I really like the striking color scheme with the black and the teal. You got the gold printing going down the torso into the hips, into the legs. This one comes with the wave amulet with the dual molded pearl gold and trans light blue iridescent or opalescent. And yeah, good printing around the back. Two different colors used for the weapon with the dark pearl gray or gunmetal gray for the uh, Psy piece and then the black colored dragon head hilt. Notice also the teal colored dive fins or flippers. Finally, these are the handful of leftover pieces and that's what the sticker sheet looked like. Yep, just four stickers. So I paid $20 US for this set and I really feel like this is a good amount of stuff to get for 20 bucks. You know, they got the $10 mechs, which are, I mean, they're not that much shorter, but they're definitely way, way down in volume of stuff in, in heft, you know? This feels pretty good to me uh, overall. And, you know, price to part ratio, whatever. Uh, has some some big parts in here. Two figures included, I think, is, is perfectly fine. I'm happy with the value here. It's just a shame, really a shame about the... <sighs> the hip joints in particular, more than anything, because this is a seven plus set. Yeah, seven plus set. Please forgive the mess. I've been kind of busy in here, but 
this needs to be able to be played with rough and it needs to be able to be set down something like this and then okay that's staying there but it's kind of on on the edge also just from setting it down just now again these parts down here have started to separate out so this definitely does not pass a play test in my opinion and i don't think i am nearly as rough in in my testing my basic testing as uh, most of the kids that this is trying to be sold to or sold for so they definitely need to to work on that because everything else is everything else is good all the parts getting out of their own way it being easy to to play with you know all the all the joints working just fine the sword being able to clip in there the fingers still working like all all this so much of this design wise is good it's the parts that that fail this one and hopefully the new large ball joint parts that we've seen showing up for for 2022 sets will fix that problem have more inherent uh friction in them so you don't need to add friction at our joints as extensions and that would fix everything this is what exoforce would look like today this is an example of what an ex exoforce just mid-range mech would look like today and i think that's i think that's great using modern techniques and more modern pieces a lot less reliance on technic uh, stuff that's a lot less spindly than the old exoforce original was uh hey exoforce reboot anybody i think i think now is the time i think that lego has proved that mechs can work uh, even at a reasonable size well including smaller but this size right here this is ideal this is for a kid this is substantial uh, I, I like that fix fix the joints and i think you're in i think you're in good shape so a lot of potential here just this one in particular definitely misses it's it's going to work a lot better i think for for older collectors and ninjago fans than it's it's true intended uh, target market unfortunately great figures though let me know what you think though down in the comments thank you for watching and i'll talk to you again soon bye for now